everyone. I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the Bay Window Zippered Bag. And uh, this bag complements the Bay Window Market Bag, which you'll also find here on my channel. This is a fairly easy zippered bag to work. And uh, one of the reasons why is it's actually a blank canvas pouch that has been inserted into the final crocheted bag in order to create the liner and the zipper. I'll show you a little later on how I connected my, um, or how I will connect my finished bag to the canvas pouch. So this bay window zippered pouch is quite easy to work. It's worked in a worsted weight 100% cotton yarn. I'm using the 24-7 cotton by Land Brand. And you'll need three colors. You're not going to need very much of each color. I put down half a ball of each. Each ball has uh, approximately 186 yards. Again, that's going to be plenty. You won't even need the full half a ball. If you make the bay window market bag and then go ahead to make the canvas pouch portion, uh, you'll have enough to do both with the yarn that's required just for the market bag pattern itself. Uh, along with that, you'll need a 4mm or G6 crochet hook and a copy of the free written instructions, which can be found on my website at richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, I invite you to subscribe, take a look around. There are several other uh, crochet zippered pouches similar to this one to match the market bags on my channel, as well the market bag patterns are there. And uh, there's many, many other crochet patterns for you and your home available also. This channel is updated every single week. A um, couple more notes about the pattern itself. You're also going to need for it along with the yarn and the hook. You're going to need a canvas pouch. This one I picked up at my local craft store. And uh, it measures approximately 7.5 inches by 10 inches. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, you're also going to need either some fabric glue to glue the top or a sewing needle uh, and some thread or I'm going to show you a little trick with your cotton later on um, to finish off the bag. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. So for our bag today we're going to start down at the bottom of our bag. It is worked in rounds. I'm going to start by using my color A which is this blue color. Later on my gray will be color B and the white color C. So we're going to start off with our color A. You're going to start by making a slip knot and then by working a foundation chain with 47 chains. If you need to change the size of your bag, uh, you, can cha you can chain any odd number of stitches. So today we're going to chain 47. And 47, once you have that foundation chain worked, you're going to begin round one by working a half double crochet into the second chain from your hook. Your chain one does not count as a stitch. And then half double crochet into each stitch all the way along until one stitch remains on your foundation chain. When you come all the way across your foundation chain and you have one stitch remaining, you're going to work three half double crochets into that final stitch, which is going to force you to turn your work so that you can then work 
along the opposite side of your foundation chain. Let me just see there. Did I just skip a stitch? No. I'm going to go back. <laughs> there we go. Two and three. So you're going to work along the opposite, opposite side of your foundation chain. You're going to work another half double crochet into the opposite side all the way across until you once again you have one stitch remaining so until you come back to that first stitch once you come all the way around and have one stitch remaining into this final stitch work two half double crochet stitches and join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. Chain one, you're going to continue working in the same direction and now for the next two rounds, rounds two and three, you're simply going to work a half double crochet into the first stitch and then half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come to that first stitch, join with a slip stitch in the top, chain one and repeat. So work these half double crochets in each stitch all the way around for rounds two and three. At the end of round three, you've joined with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. You can chain one. For round four, you're going to work a single crochet into the first stitch the same stitch is joining and into each stitch all the way around. At the end of your round four, we're going to be switching over to our color B and I'll show you uh, how I like to do that when I come all the way around. So single crochet into that first stitch and in each stitch all the way around. Now at the end of your round four, you are going to be switching over to your color B, which is my gray color. So to switch colors, what I like to do is, uh, in that final stitch before I begin the new color, insert your hook. If working the single crochet, yarn over and drop a loop. You can then drop that color A Pick up your color B and place it on your hook and pull through. You're then all set to join with a slip stitch into the top of the first stitch and uh, here we're going to chain three. Your chain three will count as a double crochet stitch. We're now going to continue working in our color B and for this pattern, I, for this section of the pattern, I did leave my yarn attached. So don't fasten off, leave it attached and it's easiest just to carry it up on the inside of your work. Once you've chained three, you're going to work a double crochet into each stitch all the way around. So double crochet into the next stitch and in each stitch all the way around. You're working in your color B when you come back to that first stitch, which is your chain three, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. Once you come all the way around at the end of round five, you're going to want to switch back to your color A, which I still have attached down here. So to switch back to your color A, yarn over, insert your hook into the final stitch, yarn over and drop a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops. You can then drop that color B, pick up your color A, which is still attached, place it on your hook and pull through. 
you're then going to join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch which is the starting chain three so you're slip stitching into the third chain then for round six you're going to chain one working with your color a single crochet into the top of that first stitch and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around when you come back to your first stitch you're going to switch back to your color B and join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch I'm here at the end of my round six switch back to your color B in that final stitch join with the slip stitch into the top of your first stitch you can then for round seven chain three which counts as a double crochet stitch double crochet into your next stitch and into each stitch all the way around when you come to your first stitch switch back to your color a and join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch at the end of your round seven you're going to switch back to your color a join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and then at this time chain one and then at this time you can fasten off that color B because you're not going to use it for a while so just fasten it off and then you can weave in your end for round eight with your color A you're going to single crochet into the same stitch as joining and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around when you come to your first stitch you're going to switch to your color C and join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch at the end of your round eight you're going to switch to your color C you can then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and at this time you can fasten off that color A as you won't need it for a little while now for round nine with your color C single crochet into the same stitch as joining and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around when you come to your first stitch join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch for round 10 you're going to continue working in the same direction chain four and this counts as a double crochet stitch and a chain one you're then going to skip the next stitch and work a double crochet into the next chain one skip the next stitch and double crochet into the next chain one skip one double crochet you're going to repeat this all the way around when you come all the way around at the end of your round nine you're going to join with a slip stitch into the third chain of that starting chain four at the end of your round ten now for eleven rounds eleven through to fifteen you are going to chain four which counts as the double crochet in chain one skip the next chain one space and double crochet into the next stitch 
chain one, skip the next chain one space, and double crochet into the next stitch. I'm going to repeat this all the way around, then join with a slip stitch into the third chain of that starting chain four, chain four, and repeat. So this is for rounds 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. At the end of round 15, you're going to work some repeats, and you can head over to richtexturescrochet.com to get the written pattern uh, so that it's easier to follow along. But once you come to the end of round 15, you're simply going to repeat rounds 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 once more. Then at the final repeat of that round 8, that is your final single crochet round in your color A. You can meet me back here and uh, we'll just work a few more rounds to finish off the top of our bag. So go ahead, finish uh, working all of your repeats. It will bring you up to uh, the end of, let me just see, the end of round 21. And at the end of round 21, meet me back here. At the end of round 21, this is what your work will look like from the beginning. So you'll have finished off on a single crochet round of color A. We're then going to work three final rounds. You're going to chain one half double crochet into that first stitch working with your color A and then half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. Join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, chain one and repeat. So for rounds 22, 23 and 24 simply work half double crochets in each stitch. Once you come to the end of round 24 you can fasten off and weave in all of your ends. Okay, so once you have your bay window zippered bag all worked and you've woven in all of your ends, you're then ready to attach the outer shell, the bag, to your canvas pouch. So what you're going to do is you're simply going to take your canvas pouch and insert it into the bay window bag. Bring your corners down, make sure they're not bunching at all. You may need to block the bag. Uh, depends a little bit on the yarn that you use and your own stitching. So once you've inserted it inside, what you're going to do is you can either take a little bit of fabric glue, glue a little, bit, uh, little line all the way around and glue the top of your fabric to the bag so that it doesn't come undone. Or you can take your crochet cotton, and I just used uh, my final color A, and you can separate the strands. And then that way you're going to get uh, a thread that matches the color of your bag. You're going to take that thread and you're going to put it onto a sewing needle. And then you're going to sew the top of your bag to the canvas pouch. So simply join, I'm just joining my thread on the inside of my bag with a knot. You'll want to make sure that it's secure so that it doesn't come undone later on. And then insert it through the top by the zipper here and using your favorite sewing stitch I'm just going to use a little back stitch here you're going to work through both the bag and the pouch and sew all the way around the top just below that zipper 
So continue sewing all the way around until it's attached on all sides. If, if, if you uh, find it helps, you can pin the outer shell of a bag of the bag to the canvas pouch to keep it in place. It's up to you, but just continue sewing all the way around. Then fasten off, weave in your ends, and that's all there is to working the bay window zippered bag. So thank you so much for joining me, and uh, once again, I invite you to subscribe, take a look around, and uh, if you happen to make the bag, be sure to tag Rich Textures Crochet on social media, and I'll come by and admire it. Until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.